Great to see you guys again, and this week I'm going to continue our series on real estate cocktail stories. And this one I'm going to call The Case of the Burial Cave Haunting. That's right, The Burial Cave Haunting. Over 20 years ago, I was brought in to sell a property in New Uwanu that had what's known as a you know a registered burial cave. And as I've mentioned in the past, anytime there's a death in a property or something associated with death around a property in Hawaii, there's always a little stigma that comes with it and people are nervous about it. We did a little bit of research on this property and at first it was thought it was a Hawaiian burial cave. And if it was a Hawaiian burial cave, it might have significant archeological issues that we needed to be aware of and disclose, et cetera. The impact of a Hawaiian burial cave, I think would be greater because of its tie to ancient Hawaii because Hawaiians were known to bury their dead in burial caves and they were supposed to be secret. Many times they were chief's bones or high ranking ali'i's bones. As we researched it, it turned out that this particular burial cave was for missionaries and not necessarily to bury them there because when a missionary would pass away, what they would do or what they would want is to go back to their hometown and those were their wishes. Back in the 1800s, there wasn't a ship leaving every day to go to Maine or Massachusetts or Connecticut where many of our missionaries came from. And so they had to put the remains somewhere cool until a ship left to go back home. And it turned out this particular burial cave was used in that manner for missionaries and the storage of their remains until they could go home. That's the background. I'm called, I'm told that, that we have a burial cave, we're going to have to disclose it. And I go through the normal process of preparing the property for sale. The last thing we do on any listing is we have professional cleaners come in to do the cleaning of the property. Crystal clear windows, everything spotless. We try to get it smelling as nice as we can. And on this particular day, I was driving there about two o'clock in the afternoon to inspect the work of the cleaners. When I arrived, the cleaners were waiting at the front door for me and they wanted to get out of there as soon as possible. And I said, well, let's walk around and let's take a look at it. I just want to check your work. And they said, it's nice and clean, but, but we want to leave. We're getting out of here. And we are not going to come back and do the final cleaning. We will not clean this house again. They appeared freaked out. They didn't tell me why they were freaked out, but they were for sure on edge. The cleaners have left and now I need to go around and check their work and lock the house up, shut the windows, lock doors, make sure it's secure. They did a fine job cleaning it and I can recall it's about 2.30 again and I'm walking around and there are not any lights on in the home. But it's the afternoon, you really don't need lights on because it was a bright house. I come around the corner and I'm hit by a flash of light. And it was a powerful flash of light. For those of you that are old enough to remember, it was almost as if a flash bulb had popped and the light had hit me and it had texture. And there was not anything on in that hallway. There was no source of light around. To this day, I have no explanation for what that was. If any of you have ideas, let me know. I can tell you that it freaked me out too. I walked around as quickly as I could, got the house locked up and left. For about the next week, I found myself uncomfortable with this house. Every time I would go there, I felt like someone was watching me or I wasn't alone there when in fact I was alone. I would go to bed at night and I would wake up in the middle of the night concerned, almost haunted by this this house, it got so bad that I called my cousin 
who is a Kumu Meli, a master of the chant. And, and I asked him, do, I need to get this house blessed. What, what do you think I need to do? And he said, you know, I'm happy to come and bless it. But I think the better solution, at least initially, is for you to shift your attitude and thinking to one of respect and honor. So that every time you go to the house, you acknowledge that there may be entities there and that you respect and honor them. You hope that they help you with the sale process. I took that to heart. My fallback was always to have him come and do the blessing. And it was interesting. Once I took that position internally, things got better. I wasn't freaked out by the house when I went there. I didn't feel like someone was watching me. And ultimately, we got the house sold. And we found the perfect buyer. The agent representing the buyer told me that he was a retired minister, and he loved the idea that this burial cave was there. So ultimately, we closed the sale. Again, until this day, I do not have an explanation for that flash. This is a tease or a bit of a tease. I can tell you I'm going to do another video in the future where I discuss a potential link to the flash and, and that might explain it, but I don't know for sure. I know this is interesting stuff. I, I know you're probably wondering what the heck is going on with Kiahi and telling ghost stories. I can tell you, as God is my witness, that flash did hit me. And, uh, and I'm not sure exactly what it was. We disclosed it and we closed the sale. If you'd like to chat with me, feel free to call me. My number is 808 398-3220, and you have a great day.